I'm given a lot of free tech from thrift shops, sometimes because they don't have all the cords or pieces necessary to test something before they resell it, or because they're simply too scared to dabble in the scary world of electronics. But the sad thing about either of those reasons is that a lot of the times it ends up with a pretty cool piece of tech taking a swim in the bottom of a dumpster. And that's where I interject myself and say, hey, instead of throwing it away, let me take it off your hands for you. And without even mentioning YouTube, a lot of times I'm just given boxes of free tech. And that's how I got my hands on this HP 24 all-in-one PC. For some reason, I love all-in-ones and this one's pretty cool. It seems to be built pretty well and it stands on a very strong hinge and a very interesting looking base, which some people hate, but I think it looks kind of cool. But what's the catch? Well, we don't even know if this thing turns on. So the plan is I'm gonna test it, fix it if necessary, and then I'm gonna be installing an operating system called Botocera, which is designed solely for retro game emulation. And then we're gonna test it and see just what kind of systems this thing can handle. Now surprisingly, this thing is not in bad condition at all. The screen doesn't appear to have any scratches and the plastics aren't warped or broken, but it is a little dirty, there's plenty of dust, and there are some marks on the back that I'm really hoping we can remove. Before I potentially waste any time cleaning this thing, I'm gonna plug it in, turn it on, and see if it works. But the only downside, and I mean the only downside to getting free tech is that you might not always get all the power cords with it, which of course is what this thing is missing. But thankfully, I do have this laptop charger cable thing from on which comes with this row of adapter heads that can fit a lot of the most common types of laptops and thankfully it does come with the one that i need for this all-in-one so let's plug this thing in and see if it has life and let's turn it on no way i hear a disk drive no shot all right it's uh it's thinking pretty hard here okay so it looks like it has windows 10 on it it just kind of got cooked somewhere repairing disk errors this might take over an hour to complete yeah i'm not waiting for that yoink let's see what we're working with okay we got an amd a9 9425 running at 3.1 gigahertz we got eight gigs of that'll take the wham that's not bad now i'm gonna run a couple tests that's gonna tell us if there's anything wrong with this thing on the hardware side Okay, so the processor passed, the Wi-Fi module passed, and it's working on the hard drive, which I know it's a hard drive because I can hear it. And there you go, the hard drive passed and the logic board passed. Is there even anything wrong with this thing? I wonder what kind of hard drive this thing has. No shot, it's got a one terabyte hard drive? It is mechanical, but still. All right, I ran every other diagnostic test that this thing has to offer, and amazingly, it appears that there's nothing wrong with it. Which means that all we have to do now is just clean it up a little bit and then install Botocera. So let's see how well this thing cleans up. Okay, I'm impressed with how well this thing cleaned up. It's in really good condition and pretty much looks brand new. So now that it's cleaned and we know it works, it's time to install Botocera. Now Botocera is an OS that's a distribution of Linux and it's designed solely for emulation. So instead of running its current broken version of Windows 10, it's gonna be running a UI that makes sifting through your retro game library easy and enjoyable. Now I'm gonna be booting Botocera off of a USB thumb drive. Now this isn't really a how-to video, so I'm not gonna show you how to do this, but it's really easy. I'll link a good video below. Now in the past, I've been a huge advocate for this Xbox 360 knockoff controller that comes with its own wireless dongle. This absolutely levels up the experience on devices that don't have Bluetooth. But the benefit of doing this on an all-in-one PC is that, well, they usually have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, meaning not only can we scrape our game art without an ethernet cable, but we can use our Bluetooth controllers as well. So I'll catch you on the other side of installing Botocera, and then let's see just what this HP 24 all-in-one can do. Wait, wait, I did just remember that earlier I heard a disc spin up in this thing, but I never opened it up to see what it was, so let's see what our free disc is. Dude, Ozzy Osbourne Blizzard of Oz. And just like that, we have Botocera and several games installed on the hard drive. Now I will say, trying to copy almost 20 gigabytes worth of files to a mechanical hard drive was annoying because it took an atrociously long amount of time. But I have several popular games for multiple consoles, so we're gonna start with the easiest, which is the Game Boy Classic, and we're gonna work our way all the way up to the Wii U. Which, I'm gonna be honest, I don't even think it's gonna open the Wii U game, but it's there for it to try. 
Starting us off, Super Mario Land for the original Game Boy ran very well, but to be fair, I'm pretty sure I could comfortably play original Game Boy games on my thermostat. Another game I tested was Super RC Pro-Am, and again, this little all-in-one handled it very well, easily hitting its 60 FPS cap. This computer gets an easy pass for the Game Boy Classic. Next up was Mario Kart Super Circuit for the Game Boy Advance. Again, this system handled Game Boy Advance games with ease. I noticed no frame stutters and the experience was overall quite nice. I also tried 007 Everything or Nothing and uh, yeah I sucked. But regardless, this system gets a pass for the Game Boy Advance. Next up is the NES, and I started off with Donkey Kong 3. The all-in-one handled this system with no problems at all and was again sitting comfortably at its 60 FPS cap. I also tried my hand at 3D World Runner, a game that I just have to load up anytime I play this system. The all-in-one gets another easy pass for the NES. Stepping it up with something a little more demanding and with true 3D graphics, I tested Mario Kart 64 for the Nintendo 64. With the 3D models upscaled to 1080p, the computer was averaging around 100 FPS, or 100% or whatever this means. Overall, a very pleasant experience. I then tried Wipeout 64, and again, it was sitting comfortably around that 100 number thing. The N64 looks amazing on this all-in-one, especially upscaled to 1080p, so the N64 gets a pass. Now the PSP is a system where some games will run very well and some will absolutely chug. So I started with ATV Off-Road Fury Blazin' Trails, and with the 3D models upscaled to 1080p, the game was very playable, sitting right around its 60 FPS cap. I then tried NCAA Football 10, my first ever PSP game from when I was a kid. I then tried Need for Speed Most Wanted, and it also ran well. This game was my childhood, and I was glad to see that I'm still very good at it. Then I tried the most demanding game for the PSP, God of War Chains of Olympus. Now this one was interesting, it was claiming around 50 FPS, but the game was obviously running significantly slower than it should have been. But I think it's because I upscaled the 3D models to 1080p, which I'm pretty sure is four times the original resolution of the PSP. Without that, I think it would have run fine. Stepping it up significantly, I then tried Mario Kart Double Dash for the GameCube. It handled it well overall, averaging around 50 FPS, but there were some frame stutters in some of the more particle heavy areas. I then tried Super Monkey Ball to ensure I couldn't sleep for a few days, and uh, this one was just goofy, because it had a problem with some of the textures just not loading. But I'm willing to bet this is a problem with the ROM, and not the actual emulator or computer. I then tried 007 Agent Under Fire, another game that ran really well, averaging around 60 FPS. Now the PS2 is where things really start to fall apart. I started with ATV Off-Road Fury 4 and, well the game looked great but was running way too slowly. This is most likely just a problem with the all-in-one's little beta GPU. COD was a similar story, it was running, but the PS2 was the only system that the FPS counter didn't work on, of course, but even in areas with no combat, it was chugging. I then tried Burnout for the OG Xbox and it was looking really promising. And then it crashed. I tried it again just for gits and shiggles and it crashed so bad I actually had to restart the computer. I then tried the OG Halo and it was the same story. I then tried to run Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U, and it actually opened it. When it came time to render anything 3D, it slowly and terrifyingly spawned in the assets. It's gonna kill this GPU. It's actually gonna die. Oh no, there go the fans. Yeah, we might just hear a buzz and then a pop. <laughs> what is this? Yeah! What? Oh shoot! It had to load in. I mean, listen, it's a slideshow, but it's running. Let's go. Oh, it has to load the animation. It's gonna die when it tries to render this. Ah! Dude. <laughs> and there you have it. The HP 24 all-in-one PC running Botocera makes up 
fairly capable emulation station. And it surprised me because it didn't run what I thought it would, and it played, albeit slowly, what I was convinced it wouldn't even open. But I do think that the Xbox and PS2 would probably both run fine if you spend the time to tweak the settings. But it did run my favorite system to emulate, the PSP, perfectly. It was smooth, upscaled to 1080p, and it was just a pleasant experience. And with one terabyte of storage, you could add like every PSP game. So if you have a computer like this and you're thinking of getting rid of it, this is a really cool way to turn it into something fun. And thanks to this one being an all-in-one, it really simplifies the experience. Well guys, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And if you'll excuse me, I definitely don't have an appointment to play Need for Speed for like six hours. So until the next one, see ya.